Okay, let's do some let's do some bear traps and some bull traps, and then I'll <clears throat> then I'll predict that things are going to go down again. <laughs> this is Brian Lewis with MMT Investing, and things just changed. So I'll get over to the current trading now. This is kind of end of day trading today that people may be interested in because tonight could be an interesting night. Um, but I just want to take a look at at some bull traps basically when we get above these lines and get those reversals it's usually one or two peaks here bull trap bull trap bull trap this one probably counts and uh we want to know if this is one and then uh, let's uh, let's circle some bear traps. So we get on our little tangent here. When we get across underneath the support line, we get a kind of rough one, and then we get the big W shape, which is uh, which is a classic bear trap shape. And here we get kind of a rough one, similar. And then we get the the clean W-shaped one here. And that's in between the peaks here. In between the peaks here. So I think that looks pretty repeatable in terms of where we should expect something. We get an immediate back test bull trap. We get kind of a double top with the bear trap W in between. It looks good. It's just that we're getting out here and we're kind of deconsolidating, I guess, between the uh, the yellow and the red line, which is not really what I expected. But if we get in here, take a look at this thing. I mean, they're just big candles. I mean, we, we back test it and swing and back test. You can't really see too much of a deconsolidation action. Um, but it does kind of trail out from the peak a bit before it goes down. So I don't think we're outside of the scope of that kind of just trailing down after the peak right now. It just trails down and gets choppy. Trails down, gets choppy. I guess th this looks okay. This looks about the same. I don't think this is anything crazy yet. We're just kind of waving in here and just seeing seeing what's going to happen. And then I guess uh, let's scroll back and take a look at the long the long bull market lines here. And you can see this kind of shape. This W-shaped bear trap thing is very common. You get W. This one kind of maybe is W-ish. Um, this looks like a W bear trap, and that's that's the that's the most common shape really when you're getting below your uh, trend line. This one's tricky because we're kind of in between some lines, and then get back to this Volmageddon thing. Yeah, I don't know if that would count as a W, and we're not really. Oh, this line should be should be here, and I think that does count as a W. And we saw this um, we saw this a lot. If you go check out my Nasdaq.com bubble, there's really clear W bear traps all over the uh, the dot com charts. And I don't know where I'm going. This is the this is kind of the Volmageddon crash here, where we got into a steeper a steeper line but i guess we could kind of look for in these bull traps what do we get here a cliff a consolidation um this looks like a w bear trap between two peaks and maybe a little w here i don't know So anyways, that's just a, that's a really common thing to see. 
on uh, when you're on a bull when you're on a bull market tangent line, most of the action is going to be above that line. And usually when you get below it, you're going to get those kind of uh, the bear trap W shapes. And that goes for these tiny tangent lines too. This is a bull. This is a bull market tangent line. It's just a short one. And you know th this one here is two years long. This one is a 12 year long tangent line to the back of the, uh, down to the financial crisis. And that's what we're testing now is this 12 year tangent. And what you see up here is uh, the end of this two year tangent, we got this, this last cross and this last consolidation. And then when you get this final consolidation, it terminates that tangent line and it finishes it. That's a two year wave that's complete. And then you can get down to the next zone. And that's what we're looking for here to see if we complete our tangent line and then get down to wherever we're trying to go into the next area of the, uh, of the credit contraction cycle. And so we have the combination of two incredible things going on at the same time here, which is very rare. It's something that you get uh, the top of a bubble in a credit contraction cycle, which generally the top of a bubble is a credit contraction cycle that blows off the top of the bubble. And you get these repeating kind of uh, shapes where you get the uh, ABC kind of Elliott wave. And then on the larger scale, ABC Elliott wave. And that's what we're looking for is here, kind of the C wave off of this top. And it looks like we have about another month or a month and a half left to get some more uh, wave action before we get out of this cycle. And we'll see where we get to. And then we should get a, we should get an expansion after this. And the low target, I guess, I mean, I guess it's possible to get all the way down to this this other tangent line right now. It looks like about nine months of uh, inflationary expansion after this cycle uh, from what I have right now. So I don't know if we could make it down to here. This is really far for one credit contraction cycle. Because if you see, we got from, what, 33, then we bounced up to 31. Then we bounced up to 28. So, I mean, getting to 12 is is nutty. Um, but we've seen some big moves like that, like in the Nikkei. But not in just the one cycle, though. I mean, those things take years, like a couple of years to get down off the Nikkei bubble or a couple of years to get down off the Great Depression. And the smaller bubbles, like Black Monday, are, are faster, you know. Um, but, but even like dot-com and financial crisis, it's not just one cycle off the top that reverses the whole bubble. Uh, the cycle on the top just breaks the bull market tangent line, basically. And that's what we have here is the 12 year uh, kind of bull market line that we're trying to break off the top. And that's that's the credit cycle here that we have. And so I'll predict uh, once again that we're going to go down. I mean, I've just been waiting for this thing to kind of. Uh, terminate and turn over and maybe maybe it will this time i don't know we'll see that looks like we're back testing and terminating right now to me and uh yeah we'll see how this looks in the morning <laughs> we'll get up in the morning it'll be like up here like oh my god what what is this uh <laughs> we'll see what happens so this is uh, Brian Lewis with MMT Investing. Please hit the like button to help me out with the YouTube algorithm. And this is not investment advice, just a messy, messy model of a credit contraction off of a, the backside of, of a bubble. And uh, yeah, check out my other videos. I just put up a uh, I just put up a dot com video that does the same kind of analysis down the dot com bubble. I have a Nikkei bubble analysis, a Great Depression. Um, I have a financial crisis bubble, and these shapes are completely normal to get off the top of the bubble. And we're just kind of trying to figure out the zones and the levels and and timing it and finding the actual heights of these tangent lines is a lot harder than I was hoping. Um, 
it's it's really easy to draw a tangent line after it happens. You just go from the point backwards, but trying to go forward and find where it's going to be in advance is that's pretty that's pretty tough. So um, so I'll keep you I'll keep you updated. And I had a request for uh, a Shopify. So I'll do Shopify and probably Etsy now. And those those should be pretty cool. I think those are going to be really interesting uh, charts to look at. And if you guys want any kind of uh, video or reviews or questions, I had a couple of questions on inflation. And um, so I just I just did a little thing about inflation. And uh, I guess the credit cycles, people want to know some more about credit cycles. Um, and that the credit cycle data mostly comes from uh, inflation data in different countries and and uh, like repo market rates and and the credit like kind of what loans are available through that the creditors the housing creditors and that sort of stuff um there's a bunch of kind of random places you can check out what kind of loans are available but the uh the inflation data uh from hedge eye is really good and you can kind of get quarterly uh quarterly data which the cycles don't really fall on quarters but um, I don't think I can show, I don't think I can show the hedge eye charts on here because they're not uh, free. They're uh, a subscription to get the hedge eye charts. And I don't think they would let me put them up here for free. Um, but I can just explain kind of what they have. I mean, they have like every sector and every country and it's just quarterly data and they just kind of track if you're going up or down in inflation, it's change of inflation and data. And uh, you can go to Hedgeye and check it out. I mean, they do show a lot of stuff for free, but I can't show that stuff on here, I don't think. And then uh, change of growth and change of inflation data, and they just map it out. And they have they have data that I roughly can look out. I mean, like three quarters. Like I just got the last chart from them like two days ago, and uh, they've already got a projection out for for next year. So, I mean, it looks like we have three, uh, three cycles in a row coming up of inflation after this credit contraction cycle. It's like inflation upgrowth, inflation downgrowth, inflation upgrowth. So that to me sounds like a pretty good uh, longer term shape that's gonna look something like this across like nine months or something that we could get after this cycle. And we might be able to repeat this entire pattern uh, over the next nine months after the cycle so that would be really cool if this pattern holds up like through that kind of time length and uh make it a lot easier to predict the backside of this bubble if it follows the pattern like that uh, but we'll see what we get and uh don't be afraid to chat and ask me for whatever um yeah please like and subscribe I i'm gonna do probably less videos uh the next week and try to focus on trying to get more subscribers over the channel. Um, yeah, so if you could subscribe, I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers. I mean, this this channel is pretty new, um, but in order to support this channel and keep it going, I'm gonna have to get the monetization amount of subscribers. And uh, that's what I'm gonna be working on a little bit this week because I already have a I already have a ton of good videos. I'm not really running out of ideas, but I think I have enough videos to kind of focus on uh, trying to get some subscribers here and get the channel monetized. So uh, happy, happy trading. This is not investment advice and happy trading.